Okay, very good morning and happy 4th of July to any of our US listeners. Uh, that's a really key thing for today. Obviously, US markets, the, the main trading floors will be closed. Uh, I think we'll just start then with the actual look at the hours associated with that. So no floor trades on the New York Stock Exchange in the CBOT pit and NYMEX. Uh, electronic trade is also on a, on a US bank holiday for any of the new guys. It is open, but it closes earlier than normal. So it'll be around six o'clock uh, our time, London time, when electronic trade on the equity and interest rate FX futures uh, closes for the day. So important because in combination with the fact that there's nothing really major coming out on the economic calendar, uh, it's expected to be a very quiet day. Uh, quite typical what we see is a little bit of activity normally in the European morning uh, but come later on this afternoon particularly with no US data uh, with them on holiday then things do get exceedingly quiet similar from a news perspective most of the people at the major news agencies uh, Bloomberg in New York they'll all be on holiday as well so things do get awfully quiet in the afternoon so it's one of those days where I would suggest not getting dragged into anything unnecessarily uh, technicals from a more playing the range or range bound type day uh, could be on the cards. Uh, any kind of breaking news headline, uh, you know, still to look out for. But I guess looking at the context of things at the moment, uh, particularly this kind of Brexit theme, I think is has just taken a little bit of a, it's dropped down the gears slightly uh, to how much of a market focus it is at this point because we're in a bit of a hiatus at least until we have this runoff uh, of the current five candidates to who will be leading the Conservative Party. Uh, this morning, fairly flat open really in the cash equity market, slight positive. Uh, the FTSE 100 climbing for a fifth consecutive day. Uh, quite interesting though to see the FTSE 250 still struggling though post Brexit. Um, you know, I think this is quite a key difference that most of the papers, those who are plugging the Leave campaign are really failing to really uh, say to the public is yes, the FTSE 100 is rallying, but no, the FTSE 250, which is more heavily domestic focused, is actually still struggling and is in fact still down 5% since the referendum. That's the more uh, clearer benchmark, if you like, of, of the UK, and that's still down around 5%. Although the FTSE 100, obviously, as we saw last week, recovered uh, the Brexit-inspired move. Uh, cable, though, let's have a look at the pound and where we stand there at the moment. Just bringing that up on my chart. You can see pretty tight around that 133 handle for the time being. Uh, this is that big, let me just get my uh, cursor. This is the big flush lower that we saw um, from Mark Carney when he spoke late on the 30th of June and he outlined the fact that the Bank of England will look to do more easing, didn't specifically say interest rates but you know they do have other tools uh, in the box so to speak and as I've said last week August looks to be the most opportune time for them to potentially ease um, policy to get ahead of the expected downturn in the wake of the Brexit for the second half of this year and into 2017. Uh, when there is, of course, a real threat of a recession. Um, just given current pricing at the moment, 133, I have seen a note out of analysts at BNP Paribas this morning. Um, that's because you do have this week the various UK PMI data. Now, analysts at BNP have said they have a target of 130 in cable, noting downside risks to UK service PMI, with the PMI survey covering three working days post the EU referendum. Now, for me, I think just three working days is a little bit small to have an overall impact on the data set. But nonetheless, people will be watching it closely for any data which encapsulates the aftermath of Brexit. So looking slightly longer dated, though, on the technicals for cable, if I just broaden this out.
the level I want to show you to the well, if you look at it on the upside here, 134.92, that was the uh, the post Lehman Brothers collapse low that we saw. You can see this big wash leather from trading uh, pretty much two spot zero. And then in the height of the subprime crisis, we fell all the way down to 134.92 before seeing a, a pretty solid bounce. Uh, and if you put that back to where we're trading on the the daily at the moment, that should provide then a pretty significant marker on the upside as a level to be aware of this week at 135 handle. We have moved above there uh, post Brexit. We failed to really consolidate any move above there. And as I say, that was around the 2009 uh, subprime crisis low. So that is an area of significance um, to the upside. To the downside, obviously looking at that post-Brexit low, so we're down at 131.33. So for the moment, in terms of cable, I'd say that's kind of your defined range for the time being, uh, as I've got marked up here. 31.33 downside to 35 on the upside. Uh, so in terms of a more longer term range for the week, that's what I'll be looking at. Uh, you can see we're pretty much bang on the midpoint uh, at current price. Looking elsewhere, the S&P coming in this morning, seeing prices then above the 2100 level for the time being. Now looking here on the, the daily, this is the kind of upside levels we'll be eyeing on the, the more record-like territory. Uh, 21, 19 and 3 quarters, should we move any higher. Uh, one quite interesting article I was reading at the weekend was, let's not forget we've got US earnings season kicking off. Uh, in about 10 days or so, I think it's the 12th of July, we get Alcoa to report. They unofficially kick off earnings season. Uh, and I was reading an article from a Bank of America equity analyst over the weekend. Uh, and they were particularly bearish on the outlook. I think they actually had the most bearish call on the street. They've got a year-end target. Uh, I think it was actually 2100, 20, um, possibly 2000. Uh, but it was nonetheless, it was kind of fairly close to current prices. But most people on the street forecasting potentially to continue to move on, I guess underpinned by the fact we'll see further easing from central banks to help elevate equities. But the point being that this Bank of America uh, analyst was saying was it'd be interesting to see in this earnings season what they say about the ramifications of Brexit. Because if the S&P 500 I think on an average basis, there's around a 20% revenue exposure to that of Europe or performance out of Europe. And because of what's happened with the vote and the EU referendum, we are expecting a downturn in economic growth, not just in the UK, but also in the Eurozone. And that will have an impact on Wall Street's profitability. And so not just the earnings which they've had in Q2, what will be interesting is do they revise downward their outlook going forward? And if that is the case, then Obviously, we trade the market trades expectations. So their outlooks will be particularly interesting going forward. A quick look at crude. There was a story over the weekend, just to be aware of. Uh, Nigerian Delta Avengers, militant group operating in Nigeria's southern oil producing region. They attacked five crude pumping facilities uh, at the weekend which has dealt a pretty significant blow to the government's effort to enforce a ceasefire. Uh, so the targets included Chevron's oil wells 7 and 8 and three trunk lines belonging to the Nigerian Petroleum Development Corp. Uh, so we are a touch higher in crude at the moment. Uh, we seem to have been capped by around the end of last week's highs, around that 49.30 type level, but up 12 cents, 49.11. Uh, obviously upside psychologically 50 bucks I guess is the nearest upside near-term target uh, and then pivot downside today would probably be the first line of support to keep your eyes on uh, but yeah continued attacks in Nigeria are going to be or have been something which has helped provide a bit of a floor in crude futures so I would suggest just keeping an eye on the news flow coming out of the um, the Niger Delta there um, for crude flow Otherwise, looking at the week as a whole, 
As I've mentioned today, we're expecting fairly quiet. We do have the construction PMI coming up shortly in around 45 minutes time. Uh, not expecting that though to make a, a major dent in the price action of cable, maybe just a, uh, a 10, 20 pip reaction if it were out of line. I mean, UK otherwise headline news flow fairly quiet. There was a few um, noises around an article on Bloomberg, Chancellor Osborne floating the idea of 15% business tax in order to boost post-Brexit economy. Again, I think the longer term target 2020 was the, uh, the manifesto from the Conservatives was to lower it to 17. So a little bit of a sweetener in order to temper the downturn in the economy, looking to lower corporation tax to 15%. I would imagine, although that's a viable option to make us more competitive against the Eurozone, large companies like Google and Starbucks if you remember in news in the last year or so, whenever they've tried to take advantage of lower tax havens like Ireland or Luxembourg, they've been pretty quickly targeted by the EU over lawsuits, over tax evasion. I think that would be the similar case if they tried to, to move that and switch to the UK. I think the EU would already be after our blood having exited. So whether or that comes to fruition or not, I'm not so sure at this point. Uh, longer for the week then, RBA interest rate announcement, that'll be overnight. You've then got the various service PMIs, the UK one, as I mentioned, BNP Paribas analysts looking for that to be a catalyst potentially for downside for cable, that'll be on Tuesday. Um, you've got FMC minutes Wednesday night, the crude oil inventory numbers, uh, just to remind you again, because of the US holiday today, they'll be pushed back a day. So we'll get Genscape Tuesday, API crude oil inventories Wednesday night, and the Department of Energy's oil inventories will be on Thursday, so a day later than normal. You've got ADP employment change, that's also a day later than normal, that'll be Thursday, and then we'll get culminating in the non-farm payrolls headline on Friday. Now looking at non-farms, could be quite interesting. I think from a Federal Reserve point of view and interest rate hikes, um, that's pretty much been discounted at least in the near term for seeing the Federal Reserve list, lift rates certainly this year. But it could affect their language on how much they're going to delay a rate hike depending on how non-farm payrolls comes in. Again, you remember the last month's reading, we had 38,000. That was a shocking reading and way below the bottom end of the analyst expectations, which was 90,000 at the time. Again, a reading was expected at well over 100,000. It came in at 38. So we've had two months of large misses on non-farms. Another month of a large miss, I think that then the employment situation rears its head back up to becoming uh, another headache for the Fed going forward, not just the likes of uncertainty over China and now Brexit, you'll also have jobs weakness coming back on the agenda of Fed policy. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that depressed number from last month was heavily affected by strikes at Verizon. I was reading a Deutsche Bank note uh, this morning, and they're suggesting that that 35, 38,000 jobs that were affected should come back online. And so they are expecting numbers back up above 100,000 is the street uh, consensus. But any number back below 100 certainly is going to uh, raise a few eyebrows and we'll be interested to see how the likes of Fed officials respond in their communication, particularly given the likes of Bullard, who, albeit errs on the side of being more hawkish, still thinks that we potentially would see one rate hike this year. OK, that pretty much wraps up your, your brief for this morning. Not really too much to go on. As I said, things pretty quiet. I'll be expecting that to remain the case today. Um, just be, you know, be cautious, be, be patient. Today might not offer up the best trading conditions on an intraday basis. Um, identify good solid levels. If there is a range, then that's probably gonna be your most opportune um, trading style for today in the, the lack of any real calendar drivers on very quiet news flow. Okay, thanks guys uh, and have a good day.